episode of our new series, Brewing, during Black History Month. We are so excited to have prepared this for y'all to watch. And this is a new series that we want to continue. And this is all filmed and produced by Black Youth. We are your hosts, Kayla Jordan and Michaela Weary. Black Lives Matter Charlotte has worked so hard on this production. And we really hope that you guys will enjoy as much as we do filming it. We interviewed about 20 people who go in and out of Black Coffee Northwest on the regular, and the main word that came up was... You know, the vibes. And the vibe of Black Coffee is definitely your first Oh, my Dexter! <laughs> Vibes. Now to black folks, this is more than just a word to put in your Instagram caption. Vibes, or the overall feeling of a person or place, was and is currently a way most black people communicate when we really don't have the words. This is why we reached out to the community, because overall it's the vibe that brings people together. And I'll tell you now, if I were to stand in a place that stood a thousand feet and was made of solid gold, if the vibe isn't right, then it's time to go. The vibe of Black Coffee, from my perspective, is unity, love, resilience, perseverance, uh, celebration, togetherness, focus, uh, and why is it important to me personally? Um, I feel like it's important to me because it's literally given me, um, it's given me Courage. It's given me uh, direction. It's given me support. It's given me um, guidance. It's given me all the things that I've always been looking for. This is Don. Don is the outreach director at Black Coffee Northwest, and on top of that, she is a single black mother. Don is helping people in and outside of our community simply because it is needed due to how the system works. If you were to be camping outside. Um, being a, a black woman myself and a single mother, um, I've been in many situations where I needed things, many situations where there were barriers that I did not know how to cross. And so I feel like I'm able to identify those, those certain spots and it's important to have someone in the same group basically to, uh, to help identify those needs and that's kind of where where it's important because I, I'm unable to get in those little those little spots that a lot of people um, are not not able to see, and I'm able to see them because I've literally lived them. I, I'm not sure that it's a trend. I think that now um, we've, that we've come together as a community, um, we've gotten um, kind of fed off of each other, and we've seen that um, it, now's the time to take action. And um, I feel like uh, the community has been forgotten about in so many ways and just kind of ignored, and we're tired of that. So. Um, we're kind of just coming together and, and helping our people. We can help our people better than us. So that's, I, I don't really feel like it's a trend. I just feel like it's, it's, it's about time. And that's kind of what we're doing right now. Let's put it this way. I haven't been to a coffee shop that had barbecue on the weekends, ever. Okay? <laughs> there's no, you know, there's no music. I mean, I've been to coffee shops with this jazz, don't get me wrong. I think we're going to continue having discussions ourselves and discussions in front of our children about racism, about anti-racism, about the difference between being not racist and anti-racist. Uh, face to face. <laughs> he walks, they come in here and they see their face on the other side of the, the glass, the one through the drive through And it's just, just so, it, it'll, it's so basic that in, in no effect, these little, these little men will never know that there wasn't a space like this prior to this. Does that make sense? I mean, we're not in the South, so don't get me wrong. Like, my we're life, not even in the South. My, the end of our well, area. Well, my family's from the South, and this place, this coffee place, where it's just all ethnic, it's all people of color that work there. It may not be old, per se. You know, Atlanta has places that are like that as well. But you take a pocket like Northwest, and this is just the beginning, 
it's really, you know, it's really just that simple. Like they, they will never know that you can be different, and that's what's so compelling. The community here, the people who work here, the owners, um, this place has began to, and the people, it's the people, the people, the community. Um, has, it just seems vital. It really feels like this. It feels like this business is more than just a business. It's a community and it's vital. It's vital to have a community like this, um, to uplift each other and to, uh, to educate, oh my goodness, the youth involved in this business, the, the young people who run this business <laughs> and are a part of this business and are in and out of this business. Uh, it's, I don't even have words because it's just, it's so beyond incredible. I don't have words for it. This generation of youth are the truth, and we will fearlessly let you know if something is trash. This is why black voices in our community are centered and focused on to make executive decisions that white people make like six figures for. Black Lives Matter Shoreline is a local youth coalition founded by me, a then 14 year old president of the company, Michaela Weary, and the boss lady, Mrs. Weary, in 2016. Now since then, these youth have been recognized by the mayor on multiple occasions and have won many awards for service. But despite how much they've earned, they still live in Shoreline, where they were hosed, threatened with a lynching, and had a gun pulled on, and so on. In these next few segments, we will see what the black youth have to say about the vibes at Black Coffee and why it's so important to us. Well, it's our way of being thankful about ourselves. Our hair is our crown. And if our, our crown doesn't look right, then that lowers our self-confidence. So if you see somebody like facing somebody else's crown, that's like, oh Queen, you need to like Queen, you need to like get something together or I uh, here, let me help you real quick so we can all look good and be happy about our crown. I don't have people at home that can help me with my hair and um, and everything like that. So I love that I have friends here um, that can help me with my hair um, and can do it for me. Um, I'm 14. I just really like practicing because like this is like uh, this is I'm at the age parent where you need to practice so you can practice on yourself and. Um, just look good and practice with your friends and everything. Or, yeah. Yeah, just talk about like, uh, I think about like the white girls trying to do like braids and like why that's it's like offensive. terrible. To me, it's offensive because uh, it takes us hours. Like, we've been doing this for an braids hour is a part and 30 of minutes right now. Black culture. Yeah. Braids, box braids, all that type of stuff originated from black cultures, African American yeah. communities. So when white people do it, I mean, it can look good on them sometimes, but it's offensive, and they have their styles that they So why would you refer to our hair as like our crown? Uh, because this is where we feel the most confident. Because we can walk out the house with sweats, a hoodie, and some tennis shoes, or slides, but we feel most confident when our hair is buns or box braid or braid it or just it has to, we feel like it has to look good to be accepted by society uh, i now would like to welcome you to our red table talk this is a segment to have a chance to talk one-on-one -on -one with youth from Shoreline and youth a part of Black Women's Matter. And today I would like to welcome Malachi Innocent and Care Johnson. Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> the first thing I'm going to ask you is how, what do you feel like, what do you feel the environment is at Black um, I like, think what is a vibe to you? The first thing that comes to mind when I think of the environment of Black Walk is a safe space, you know. I can come here and I can feel welcome and not be judged by the color of my skin, how I look, but 
you know, I'm not doing that. So, I think it's a safe space. Yeah, what do you care? Um, yeah, basically just the same thing. You know, it's, it's a safe place where, you know, you can just be yourself the way that you want to be. You don't have to commit to just social norms and how black people are supposed to be. Yeah, I feel like I feel like that too. I feel like Black Hockey is a place for Black youth and Black residents of Charlotte to be there, to be themselves. Um, moving on to our next question: Why is Black Hockey a safe space for you, as Black youth, a predominantly white youth? Honestly, I feel like it's really just the fact that it's a it is run by such amazing people. It, it's a black owned business. Just the way that it's set, it's just, it's meant to feel safe for yeah. a lot of you. Yeah, and yeah, I kind of, to add on to that, I completely agree with you. I feel like I can be home. Like this could be my second home. Yeah, I can be myself and I can be, I think it's so important to be around these people, especially in a white, predominantly white neighborhood, to be able to have the safe space for black people to come together. And as much as it is about the coffee and the fact that it's a coffee shop, it's also about the community. Yeah, um, another question that I have for you guys is, what do you look forward to coming here? Whether it's seeing your friends, getting to help out around the place, or anything else that you guys enjoy. I look forward to just, I look forward to working here. I love staff over here. Yeah, so thank you for coming on the show today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah. And thank you to all our wonderful viewers, too. Bye. I'm really happy that you can be on the show with us and your dogs, too. Thank you. So, um, what is one thing that you like about black coffee? The people. Oh, that's, that's nice. I got and the K&A crew, for sure. Yes, the K&A crew. Thank you. Including you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, what is one thing that you like about black coffee? Definitely the hot coffee. Yeah, that's good. Me too. Me too. Aww. Aww. Why have you decided to be a part of that? Like, what makes you, what inspired you? Inspired? Yeah. What made you want? Technically. All right, y'all. Thank you guys so much for watching this first episode. We are excited and we're going to keep the series going. So we hope you enjoy. And don't forget to comment down below on what you want to see next. We hope you all enjoy our episode and we hope to see you next episode. Bye! Because there is no vibe in Shoreline. There is no vibe. The vibe has always been white people, you're fine, you're the norm. Anyone else? Watch yourself. The vibe here is different. This is our space. This is a place where we're safe, where we make the rules, where we can say, we're good here, and we're gonna keep our eye on everybody else. And Shoreline needs more of those places. What I hope to see at Black Coffee in the future is more black youth, black artists, black business owners, being creative, selling their products, their art, um, showcasing their excellence and the youth leading the community. Thank you for tuning in. And from my coffee shop to wherever you are, have a vibey day.